Hello, this is Francisco Serrano, and today I'm going to talk to you about artificial intelligence, for short, AI. First, I'm going to tell you what artificial intelligence is not. It's Skynet, Ultron, or the Matrix trying to take over the world. That might be a problem that we'll face in the future if we are not careful. But that is not what AI is. Even more, you do not need any sort of robot to talk about artificial intelligence. According to MIT professor Winston, it all started with Lady Lovelace, the world's first programmer, who wrote programs about 100 years before they were computers to run them. But it is interesting that even in 1842, people were hassling her about where computers could get really smart. After Lady Lovelace, it was until Alan Turing's paper in 1950 that he came up with the Turing test which exhibited intelligent behavior in machines. For a definition, according to Winston, artificial intelligence is the algorithms or methods enabled, constrained, exposed by representation that support models target to thinking, perception, and action. These last three working in a loop. Dr. Ran Hindi provides a simpler definition. Artificial intelligence is an autonomous behavior in an artificial agent, so it is anything that is not biological that you add some sort of behavior to it. So, an artificial intelligence is an imitation of biological intelligence. Some examples of biological intelligence are from the more primitive intelligence of monocellular organisms like bacteria, all the way to the highly sophisticated intelligence of humans. Again, when we talk about AI, we are not talking about super intelligent, ambitious machines that are trying to take over the world. In fact, we interact with them over a daily basis, like Facebook, YouTube, and Google, which are programmed to decide, based on your search history, what you might find appealing. So what is an AI in learning design? According to Lukin, historically the focus of AI was the building of computational models of school curriculum for a particular subject that ended in building of models of how to teach. One of the benefits of using some of the AI technology available today is that it could be applied to support students learning at scales previously unimaginable by providing one-on-one -on -one tutoring to every student in every subject. So AI personalized learning for each student. Still, in my experience, I can say that AI is still not able to replace teachers. Actually, it is far from it. It can be used to give individual instruction to each student while the teacher can also give a superior individual or small group instruction. Also, the assessment could be measured while learning takes place. All the interactions are being monitored, recorded, and are useful for the AI to learn better ways to teach and to grade at the same time. The one very important part of artificial intelligence in education is that it is student-centered, which is accomplished by adapting learning programs games and software. These kind of programs put together emphasis on certain topics that students might need. Repeating things that students haven't mastered, letting students work at their own pace. Artificial intelligence programs can also tell teachers which questions are answered wrong constantly, alerting the teachers so that they can improve their teaching in that specific area. Pearson is now focusing in three different categories of artificial intelligence for educational software. Personal tutors for every learner, intelligent support for collaborative learning, and intelligent virtual reality. In my job, actually, I work with teachers and students in teaching them about tech structures and we use an AI program with an intelligent tutor. Adaptive group formation use AI techniques and knowledge about individual participants more often represented in learned models to form a group best suited for a particular collaborative task. The aim might be to design a group of students all at the similar cognitive level and a similar interests. Virtual reality provides authentic immersive experiences. 
the subjective impression that one is participating in a realistic experience that simulates some aspect of the real world in which the user would not otherwise have access, such as dangerous environments or somewhere geographically or historically inaccessible. Virtual reality becomes intelligent when it is argumented with artificial intelligence. AI might be used simply to enhance the virtual world, giving it the ability to interact with and respond to the user's actions in ways that feel more natural. Also, from sticky gels that turn insect sized drones into artificial pollinators to self-driving cars, artificial intelligence is playing a major change in our life, and we need to be able to take the most from it. We as educators need to embrace technology, not fear it. There is no doubt that teachers need to be central agents in the next phase of AI education. In one sense, this is obvious. It is teachers who will be the orchestrators of when and how to use these AIED tools. In turn, the AIED tools will empower teachers to decide how best to marshal the various resources at their disposal. To finalize, I would like to add that with artificial intelligence, it would be easier for students that speak another language to have access to tools in their native language, although I still encourage teachers to learn foreign languages. Well, this is it. Thank you very much.